Games Workshop are doing something that I don't think they've ever done before, and while it is interesting, it also comes with a few issues. This is the Ghost Dragon by Archon Studio, and while it's not a Games Workshop kit, it is relevant to today's discussion because this is made of a clear plastic, not resin, plastic. Now, this is something that Games Workshop has yet to do, and they are just about to introduce a new kit using basically this same kind of material. They have done clear stuff before. They did the five ring bearers, but they were in clear resin from Forge World, and clear plastic is something of a different animal. As we can see right here, the Warriors of the Dead and the King of the Dead and Herald kits have all been recast in clear plastic with a spectral blue tint for a unique impact on the tabletop. Now, it's worth pointing out that the effect as they've used used it here is really really nice having that clear blue plastic flowing into painted well more i'd say probably heavily dry brushed white and gray it actually makes for a really interesting and nice effect it works very well given that these are spectral dead ghostly warriors it's not a bad idea. I'm pretty sure that a full force of these on the tabletop would look absolutely fantastic. In terms of just how they look, I really like them. It's very effective. It has exactly the right sort of look that you'd want from a spectral army, and that mix of paint and plastic works super, super well. It's really nicely grounded with proper basing, and aesthetically, I've just got no complaints. Additionally, they're not getting rid of the old kits, so it's not as though you would have to have these and wouldn't have the option to get anything else you're not locked into only using these models so that again it's a big plus you don't have to have this effect if you don't want it the thing is that while they do look really really good there is a downside to clear tinted plastic in the great tier list of materials that models are made out of i would suggest that metal is hard to work with resin is not quite as difficult but still not all that easy and plastic is for me at least the easiest material to work with. I find it a lot easier to kit bash. I find it a lot easier to convert plastic models. The fact that you can use plastic glue as opposed to super glue makes a big difference. And it's just generally easier to mash stuff together, in my experience, when everything is plastic. That preference, however, is not extended to clear or tinted plastic because this Ghost Dragon, I love it. I love the design of it. I think it looks really, really good. I did not, however, enjoy putting it together. Now, I don't for a moment think that Games Workshop is going to use the same clear plastic as Archon Studio uses for theirs. They're two different companies, and Archon Studio's plastics, their regular plastics, are different to Games Workshop's. But I still think that one of the issues that I had with this particular dragon, well, not just this dragon, also things like the terrain that they've done as well, might spill over into Games Workshop's work as well. See, with this thing... There was a distinct problem that I ran into, which was cleanup. Now, when you have a regular plastic model and you put it together, any cleanup that you need to do is pretty easy to do. You can get rid of sprue marks by filing. You can use a mold line remover to scrape away any particularly egregious little slips here and there. And by the time you're done, you don't have any sort of noticeable change to the actual material itself. You can file it down nice and smooth, and you would never know that an issue was there to begin with. It's one of the things that I like so much about working with plastic in particular, is how quick and easy the cleanup is, and how borderline unnoticeable it is. Clear plastic, however, I've found to be very different to work with to regular plastic. And one of the things that I've found is that things like sprue marks, where you cut it off the sprue, are extremely noticeable. They are very noticeable. You end up with a kind of chalky white mark on the model, which is very difficult to get rid of, because if you then try and file that down, what you end up with is a bunch of scratches in the surface of the translucent see-through bits of the plastic itself. And that wouldn't be a problem if you were planning on painting the model. But of course, the entire point of clear plastic is that you don't paint the whole thing. I also found that plastic glue wasn't very effective on this, but that might be totally different for Games Workshop's models, I don't know. But that issue of sprue marks, scratches, things that mar the surface that would have to be covered up with paint are definitely a problem when the whole point of the squad and the whole point of the model itself is that it is supposed to have that clear effect. It's kind of put me in two minds as to this new kit, because on the one hand, it looks fantastic, and it's actually making me want to do something with Lord of the Rings, which previously... I was not that interested, but the idea of having a full army of these ghostly warriors is 
very, very appealing, frankly, despite the fact that as a material, I'm not as big a fan as I am of just normal, regular plastics. But those issues with marring the surface, with having small white scratches, having things kind of dictate where you need to put paint to hide a cleanup process that is normally very easy, but on this material is not quite so easy, it makes me a little bit wary. Now, of course, what I'd really hope for is that Games Workshop's formula for this clear plastic is such that that kind of issue doesn't really happen, that you're able to clean it up just as easily as you would with regular plastic, and that you wouldn't have those marks that cover the surface. I mean, you can paint over them, but depending on how the squad is laid out, you might want to just copy exactly what the article shows, where as long as you don't have too many attachments on the sides of these kind of flowing shapes, you would be able to get away with it, because there wouldn't be anything there to break or mar the surface. But that's heavily dependent on how the sprue is laid out. But it would be a shame if you finished cutting these guys out and found that there was a bunch of small scuffs and marks that you couldn't remove and simply had to paint over, because I think that would kind of spoil the effect of these models. I guess at the end of the day, I really like the models. I like the way they've done it. I like the effect that you get from this transition from solid to ethereal. They've done it really, really nicely. But if you're gonna pick this kit up, it might be something to look out for. I think it's just worth pointing out that if you're excited by these, if you're gonna pick these up when they show up, it's worth remembering that it might not be as easy to work with as it first looks, that it's not going to be as simple as a standard plastic kit, that the cleanup is going to be a little bit more in-depth, it's going to require a little bit more care, a little bit more attention, because the whole point of these is that unmarred, really nice translucent surface, and if you end up scratching across it with a file by accident, that's going to have a, a negative impact on the overall look of the model itself. And this is a force that you want to be at its full kind of ghostly glory with no sign of like scalpel marks or snip marks or file marks. If nothing else though, I will say that now I know how to paint this. I've been wondering what to do with this model since I put it together and I just couldn't work out what I was going to do, how I was going to paint it what effect I was going to go for, whether I was just going to leave it like that, but then that felt lazy. But now I know exactly what to do, and that's dry brush a bit of grey and white onto it. So, 10 out of 10 for the idea, at least. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Members and patrons, look out. There is going to be a brand new video for you tomorrow. You're going to have a bit of input, quite a bit of input, on a fairly significant project that's coming up for the channel. So keep your eyes peeled for that. If you're not yet a member or a patron, then there are options to do both of those things, or either, probably either. You probably don't want to do both, because you'll get the same thing twice. But there's stuff in the description if you have a look, if you want to. Also, at the moment... A lot of you ask where the t-shirts are from on pretty much every other video at this point. So into the AM, there's a link in the description for that. You get 10% off if you use my link. There's a Black Friday sale going on now, which some stuff is like 70% off. And then the 10% off stacks on top of that. So yeah, it's worth taking a look if you're interested. That's enough promotional stuff. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you for the next one.